Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm pleased to announce I'm going to set up the uh, furniture in my house exterior here. I've laid everything out. I got a bunch of furniture to play with this uh, awesome Halloween theme and eager to get started. So I've got this um, forest couch up here. The forest couch, basically, uh, I was kind of experimenting with this, and it's something um, related to the the Nexus uh, pool here, the uh, the pool of water. It was the fountain from the the mall, and I was a little curious if you can actually jump into the uh, the mall fountain. Um, I know that in the, in the Nexus itself you could, so I kind of played with that a little bit, and I found out that you can indeed um, jump into this fountain and wander around, but you do need something to jump out on the other side. So I've set that up here. Um, I'm going to use it in my, my display. I don't know if I'm going to let you jump into it or not, um, you know, as the player. I think that it's kind of secondary to what my, my purpose will be here, but uh, if I want to, you can. So I got a lot of skulls. I got a lot of kind of um, Halloween-y kind of a stuff going on here. Uh, I also bought a few um, gravestones. So I'm pretty happy about that. Just specifically because this this level is just asking for headstones. You need to have some some kind of graves or something going on here with the mausoleum and all the dead leaves and yeah, pools of blood on the floor. Definitely. All right, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to pick up some random furniture objects here. And they may or may not all go into the design. Uh, I like this guy. These uh, coffins are pretty cool. I don't know if it's going to fit in the design that I'm looking at. I'm going to probably keep that one aside for now. Actually, this is something kind of nifty about the uh, having the trees in this level is that you can easily just chuck something into the trees if you know, that, you know, oh, maybe I'm not going to use it. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Okay, we'll throw it in the trees for now. We'll see later. Okay, so I got a random pile of stuff here. Basically, there's there's a bunch of items that have been selected. All right, I got this little dancing flower. I'll keep the dancing flower right there. What else, what's next here? Okay, I have the gargoyle statue. This is the crypt gargoyle statue. I'm definitely gonna use that. I'm going to probably wanna put him at the base of a fence though. I have another little dancing flower. I wanted to get those guys in here. Uh, they were from the uh, Alice in Wonderland theme at Nexus. I'm gonna probably wanna put that guy on the other side actually. There was one with little sunglasses that I bought too. Keep that guy over here, maybe a little bit closer to the entrance. I think that's a good spot right down there. I, I like to have these kind of like, um, you know, uh, interesting objects or stuff that's that's not interactive but looks cool. I like to, to take it into an area where that you're not going to have them blocking the, uh, the movement of the players, if possible. There's another little dancing flower. It's going to be the same scenario. I'm going to keep him up, up in the corner here, though. He's, this is the one with the little sunglasses. I'm going to keep him up here. And keep him up in the corner. Not terribly obvious, but still visible. Okay, so what's next? I have the campfire. Interestingly, this will um, light the pool on fire. If you keep <laughs> that in the middle of the pool there, I'm going to throw it up in the corner for now. Uh, actually, maybe I will bring it down here. I think maybe it will do a little bit better, a little more prominent. Um, I'm probably going to want to move those mirrors down there too. So considering that, maybe I'll have it open into an area with the campsite. I'm going to move the mirrors up. Something like that. Okay, what's our next object here? I have the, oh, this is a brownie chair. So the brownie chair is going to be my sacrificial altar. Always, always required in a scary haunted area. Um, that's going to go with the brownie table and I'm going to put it down in this corner over here. So I don't know if I'm going to get the same object again, but I'm totally going to keep them down in this area over here. Gotcha, there's the other gargoyle statue. This brownie chair, we're gonna keep it, oh. 
and make the screen wiggle around instead. Uh, <laughs> brownie chair, we're gonna keep right here. Uh, keep it down in the corner there. And see what's next, what do we got? Uh, Crypt Candle, so I got a whole bunch of those. Uh, they're kinda cool lighting effect. Um, they have a little moving candle light, which is good. Uh, not perfect for every scenario but often pretty handy. There's another one of those, uh, what's it called, the coffin bed. Uh, this one is the skull, or the bone throne, rather. And keep the bone throne up top. Up with the others. So I had those four that were set up here. I think that I can probably get away with um, slapping another couple behind. I, I have a whole bunch more that I'm going to keep in there. So I actually, I'd actually picked up my uh, my candy grab bags, and when I picked up my um, grab bags, I had a few in there. But now I've also got the ones from my house, so I probably got like ten or twelve of these things now that are just asking to be placed. So I'll keep them up in here. Try and get it as close to possible as on the other side. Just symmetrical. Uh, so this this bone here is going to match the bone on the other side. It looks pretty good. Let's see what's next. Probably the additional. Uh, oh no, coffin bed. Cool. Okay, coffin bed. You go over there. Hold tight, coffin bed. We'll get to you. Okay. So I have a uh, random ghost running through the house. There looks like he logged in or logged out or something and he showed up there might have been an admin the way he was running I don't know never know they do come through now and then cool okay so I'm going to take the next object here what do we got oh it's the grave bed so I originally placed the grave bed in that spot um, kind of disconcerting that it's coming out now but that's okay I probably will not use the great bed in the final layout on this one. Okay, I'll keep that back up near the top. Uh, I'm going to have a few more of those pop out too, so I'm going to keep one down in the front. And I'll probably position them nicely when they're, they're all together in a pile, but for now I think that's okay. I'm going to keep that mirror over with the others. These, these bone mirrors, I mean, they've got a really cool effect. It's really neat to be able to see your character, and they actually have an added bonus that if you ride your horse in front of one of these mirrors, or any mirror really in the game, um, it immediately makes you drop your horse. So if you want to create a, a level where places are not accessible by horse, you can throw a mirror in there casually. Um, I know that sounds a little weird, but if you put the mirror in, uh, it will prevent players who walk in front of it from being riding on their horse. So you could hide it, but they're a little bit big to hide. Uh, there are smaller mirrors. Oh, there's another brownie chair. Keep that down there. What else we got? Oh, there's another brownie chair. Looks like looks like we're coming to the the good stuff over here. I'm guessing I'm anticipating another brownie chair. Oh, it was a crypt candle. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to go down here. Um, I'm actually going to flip out these uh, brownie chairs here. I got one more hiding in there somewhere. I'm going to keep one here. Uh, keep one underneath on the bottom there. See if it lines up properly. Uh... Is that good enough? I don't think so. I think I gotta move all these up one. Oops, open my menu by accident there. Yeah, so basically if I'm gonna take these brownie chairs uh, seriously, I'd like players to be able to enter them and sit. And I mean, that's kind of the way that I like to have most of my chairs or seating in general. I like it to be interactive. I like players to be able to use it uh, if it's visible on screen. So I will keep those properly. If I can get away with it. There we go, there's one there. Um, but I'm gonna move on, move on to my um, Gothic fences next here, because I know, I know what I wanna do with that now. Uh, I have these big old skulls. This skull here is uh, pretty awesome. I've gone over it in a previous video, I'm sure, but it's got 
a whole ton of different variations, which are kind of unnecessary because the only real awesomest one, like there's one that's just totally cool, which is that the skull is on fire. And it's like this huge, gigantic skull, and it's on fire. So <laughs> I think 90% of the work that's gone into that, really nice, really cool art, but I think everybody uses the flaming skull or the, the one that's on fire. Um, I mean, generally, that's just the, the coolest looking one. You can also use it if you hide it underneath something. You can make it look like something else is on fire, which is also pretty awesome. Um... Yeah, so I'm gonna try and line this uh, this fence up in a nice way where you can still sit. Uh, if I have another brownie chair hopping in there, I'd like to see the other chair. Click a couple times up here, see if I can grab it. No, it doesn't look like it. I'm getting something else. Uh, is that caution tape? Oh no, it's the uh, the guillotine. That's cool. Um, so I'm gonna line this up so you can still sit down here. Keep it right there in the middle. Um, basically just allowing two spaces or two units here so that players can come in um, and use that object or interact with the, um, the kind of scenery I got going on there. I'm trying to make it so that I've got a little fence going on. I will probably move that golden tree. I'm also going to move this guy up here. So, oh wow, that was almost perfect placement right off the bat. So on this side, on the left-hand side here, I'm going to kind of hedge it in with this gothic fence. When I get the gothic fence in there, it's going to come up the side, uh, up against the trees, and it will add, uh, add a cool effect to this this area. I think I like I like seeing that. Kind of almost cinder blocks going on. Uh, I like that skull peeking out of there too. That looks pretty cool. I think that's probably my favorite part about this whole entire layout is this these little skull bushes, the bushes that are you know they're making skulls or they look like they're skulls. I think that's pretty awesome. Too bad that you don't pick it up and have a little skull over your head, but that's fine. It's good as it is. Uh, here's a question: Does this Water pool hide trees. It hides a tree. If I put it over top of the tree, it's going to be gone. That's awesome. Okay, I will totally be using it for that. I'm going to get rid of this tree with the uh, the water pool as soon as it's as everything else is clear here from this pile. Okay, so going to take off to the right a little bit here. Continue uh, with my wall. I'm going to make a space in the wall though. Uh, I'm going to leave a gap, and it should be that these gaps are exactly the same width as one of these um, sets of, or this one, one of these fence pieces. That's usually how I do it. Um, so if I'm taking that piece and moving it, um, I will use the, the other fence piece, uh, or the, the old fence piece, the, the kind of outline there. You can see that there's kind of an outline on the screen, so I'll use that as a reference and, and try and line it up with that so the players can go in and out of there. And it also looks proper because it's gonna it's gonna make the um, the whole thing line up properly across the bottom there. Uh, keep this little tree up here. I like that the little yellow trees actually pretty much match the surroundings. They got that orangey yellowy vibe going on. Looks pretty cool. Got a couple of gravestones down here too. Um, gravestones are probably gonna be placed near the end, just because they're they're kind of like set piece. Like, if you have one gravestone by itself somewhere, it's probably not going to look very good. But if you have um, a set of them, like if they're if they're nicely lined up and they look in relation to the others, rather natural, then it looks a lot better. Okay, I have an arrow vendor and a bomb vendor over here, so I'm gonna pop those um, down a little bit here. Oh, if I can get away with it. Can I get away with it? I, um, yeah, I think that's going to be OK. I think it'll line up nicely with the other one if I keep the arrow vendor on that side. Great. OK, uh, this is going to be the little tree. The little tree that couldn't. Uh, this guy here, another gravestone. Keep it up in the middle there for now. 
And this is the uh, the skull statue. So the skull statue I'm going to keep on the other side. Um, I'm going to try and line these up in a nice way so that the the entrance is kind of symmetrical and neat looking. And my little skeleton dog, he's totally cool. Uh, ancient, but pretty unique. Mm, we call him, what do we call him? Charlie. Any Stephen King readers out there will get that. Da da dum, da da chuck. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to keep this guy up here, uh, and I think we're looking pretty good. This little section down here looks pretty cool. Um, I'm missing that one that one brownie chair, which will go in there when it's done, uh, but you can already see it shaping up. You get you get some order in there. Um, you start seeing some, some pattern going on, and it starts to look pretty cool pretty quick. So I'm going to take this uh, the arrow vendor and do the same thing. I'm going to line it up nicely with the bomb vendor. Um, make it a, a unit here. And it should be, like, I always try and keep my arrow and bomb vendor, if they're in my house, I'll keep them by the door. Because players that come in looking for that will see them right away and they'll pick them up. Um, you'll be able to, to grab your arrows or bombs right away as soon as you're in the door. The other thing that I like to keep front near the front door is vases. Um, so if, I, if I'm dropping in and I want to pick up some health right away, um, you can grab a vase. The other thing that some players might keep is a, um, a hay uh, vessel. The thing, the thing that like, you can you can uh, eat hay with your horse really quick. I don't have any of those. I haven't ever bought one. Um, but if you if you have it, and it's something that players drop into your house, they want to power up their horses right away when they jump in. Then uh, great, why not keep that by your front door too? Okay, so I've got um, a little bit of a conundrum here. I have this this awesome entryway. It's not going to be symmetrical no matter what I do. Um, if I have these gothic fences out of alignment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and line these up in such a way where the one on the right-hand side, like I'm going to add um, up the right-hand side, I'm going to add these gothic fences until they run out. Um, but I will try and line it up in such a way where they are going to be as they would be if the, the chain was continuous across. Okay, oh, I think I goofed that up. Okay, so right over here. Um, basically, you can see that I've, I've already eyeballed this and it's perfect, I had to check anyway. Um, these guys are coming across. From there, I'm gonna go one further and see what that looks like, because I would like it to be properly lined up. And I think that that works just perfect. Yeah, it does. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep these uh, lined up against the trees but not overlap this stump right here. I like the stump too much in that position. It looks cool there. So I will bend this one around and my line up the side on this side is gonna start here. So I'm actually gonna take this one out and put it up top. So basically if this if this came right across and it continued up up the, the side here that these would be exactly as they are now. It would be a, an unbroken line to that to that point. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing over here. Um, keep these guys running up the side. Uh, and we're what five up from here now. Uh, so we have a one that's the invisible one, or the one that's not there. Uh, two, three, four, five up the side. I'm going to walk over to the left here, see if I can count the ones on the other side which is only one, two, three so far. We'll keep a couple more up there. See if I can run out of these gothic fences. There's 21 pieces, I think. I don't know how far along I am on that, but I've got a whole ton. Whole ton of them. Okay, uh, and this is gonna be the thing that goes on the tree when it's done. So I'm gonna just hang it out down here so it's obvious. I got these uh, tentacle arms as well. I'm gonna probably put those by the um, by the bottom of the fence here. Something like this. Because I like those. I think they're kind of funky. I mean, technically I could probably keep them coming out of that lava or that blood as well there too. 
That's probably even cooler. Looks like it's coming out of the water. There. Yeah, maybe right there. Okay, I'm I'm getting distracted here <laughs> playing with playing with the the red water. Okay, so these guys are going to keep going up. Um I think what I'll do is I'm actually going to separate this. I'm going to do one more up and then I'm going to keep it uh off to the side. So I'll grab one more gothic fence right here. Oh, that little flower is going to have to move. I'm going to keep them in the in the woods a little further there. There we go. Yeah, that's good enough. I think he's like hiding up on top of a tree now. That's cool. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to turn this one on its side. Use the rotate. And um, I'm going to make a, a, another section. So basically to, to cap this off and make it so that the mausoleum or like the interior house access is going to be at a different location. So it's like it's like there's this there's this central kind of a gate area or gated area. And then uh, at the top, there's that, that other section. I'm going to take this across too. So um, looking at the way that the house is lined up and that the, the furniture is kind of coming to be, um, I'm going to look at... That has to come directly across to the center of that yellow tree. Um, I'm going to look at trying to keep this open as over as well over here. So uh, basically, you can come in, you can walk through, and then you can go up and then walk in this direction. So it's kind of like a big S, a little kind of a U shape. Have the players come in and walk through the level a little bit. Um, kind of force them, force them or co coerce them to go in a specific direction. There is a path that kind of goes right up the middle. Um, I'm going to completely ignore that and make them walk over here. <laughs> if this was like an old school house, you'd be trying to find a plan where um, every single bush that you have in the entire level gets hit by something like that the players have to cut it down or change it in some way where those bushes get destroyed. But uh, we're going to avoid that because it's no longer, you know, 2015. The code shop is dead. Long live the code shop. Okay, uh, I need one more long one on the right-hand side as well. And I think I'm going to just wind up with way too many of these crypt fences, or these gothic fences, rather. I think that's just that's just where I'm headed right now. I always have too many of these mirrors as well. These mirrors are so dumb. <laughs> There's just too many of them. They're cool. I like it. It's big. It's bulky. It, Using it is almost impossible. Using it effectively, like in the layout and making it look natural in a in a house, eh, it's very very tedious, very difficult. Okay, I got I got one more gothic fence location here, and then I'm just gonna have to hide the rest of them. Uh, right here, we're gonna keep one last one. Ooh, should I even do that? Yeah, yeah, I feel like I have to. Okay, we got our bone torches coming up. Excited for those. I think I've got 16 of those now. Oh, I should sell some of them. I should. Uh, I also have a large number of these bone fences. Um, I wish I could sell them to players because these are really cool, but I've got, I think, probably about 15 or 20 too many for anything I ever want to build. Usually I'm good with 35 fences. Um, at this stage, it's like I've got 40 odd fences that are just like little skeleton heads. And yeah, they're okay sometimes. They're really useful when you're doing specifically Halloween stuff that you want to look like, okay, there's a mountain of bones. <laughs> Outside of that, it's kind of useless. You don't really want to use them for, you know, a happy candy house or something. I don't know. Pretty frustrating. Is this is this first world Graylian problems? I suppose you have too much furniture of a specific kind. Okay, there's the uh, the burning skull that looks cool. I'm so happy about that guy. Uh, we're gonna keep him probably in a tree. That's my best guess. Like, haha! Hey guys, my head's sticking out of a tree. Uh, or I could light these uh, these chairs on fire. That's the other thing I could do is I can hide this up here and make these chairs burning. But uh, we'll keep them in the tree for now and play with it later if the time comes. Gonna take these guys across. 
Oh, blood stains. All right, uh, I'm gonna put some stains over here. Uh, by the front gate on the path. Uh, this grave bed is going to oh, escape my grasp. Grave bed will go up here. I'm gonna keep it up with the uh, the couch for now, but we're probably gonna move those guys into the main area down below here eventually. Um, and now I'm kind of seeing like this is the actual graveyard section. Uh, maybe what I will do is cheat right here a little bit um, because there's a there's an overlap that's happening with my tree on the other side here. So what I'm going to look at is kind of adjusting these just a little bit, even though it goes against the whole thing that I built where it's like, oh, they all have to be in the same spot. But for the sake of that unnatural overlap of this object and the tree and knowing very well that anything that I try to do to hide that is just going to cause it to be more prominent. Like, I can try and stack a bunch of stuff in front of it, but it's not going to help. So to do this is actually serving my purpose, because I can now have this this little doorway. Players have to go in there. Um, and I think it just looks better in general that it's been shifted over one. And I can go through here and move through. Yeah, it looks good to me. Cool. I think I'll probably get rid of those springboards. I don't anticipate using them, but I will keep them there for now, just in case might want to do something interesting with the oh. oh there is a question if I jump on the springboard and I've got the mouse trap set and I jump over the mouse trap do I die that's an interesting question I've never tried this so for those of you who are not aware as I'm hopping up to the ready position up here um, that mouse trap now that it is set uh, if I walk on top of this mouse trap on the the right hand side it will kill me uh, let's make this really obvious i'm going to move this mirror i'm going to move this down and it's going to jump directly onto the other springboard so i'm going to try and slingshot my body through the mouse trap onto this other thing here and see if i like shot in the air and dead <laughs> let's see what happens here Okay, so I'm flying through the air. Oh, it went off and I got teleported into the grave. <laughs> wow, that was awesome. Oh no, I'm still dead over there. Okay. Yeah, no. It stopped me at my tracks. I didn't I didn't get to fly. Too bad. That's okay. Uh but there you go. Question answered. That's what happens when you uh, set the mouse trap and then uh jump over top of it. I imagine a similar thing would happen with the conveyor belt and other furniture that propels you around as well. Good to know. I've been using it as a torture device. Put the mouse trap in there with the uh, the guillotine. It kind of it kind of suits. Cool. Okay. Um so those guys are pretty much useless then. Either way, but I will keep them in the level for fun for now. I am going to use these uh crypt gargoyles next. I'm going to take them down into this section down here. Where I've got my little uh, brownie table, my brownie table altar, um, and I'm going to take these gargoyle statues and kind of cap the edges of this, um, so I can see that there's this mushroom right here, and I don't really like the appearance of the mushroom in that section. I'm just going to half increment this guy because these are actually three units long. Um, I'm going to half increment it and line it up with the the base of that to cover up the uh, the mushroom. And I'll do the same thing on this side to take attention away from the uh, the red pool. Uh, let's make sure that they're lined up. Is it? Yeah, it will be. Great, there we go. Charlie, what are you doing? Get out from under there. I know you're dead, but it's not an excuse. Don't play in the gargoyles. Let's see if he's ready to move. Sometimes what'll happen with these little furniture guys, um, the, the pets, uh, the old pets, not the new fancy cant pets. Um, these guys will uh, stop moving if you put them underneath or on top of a furniture object that's got collisions. So if it's a solid object uh, and you put that pet on top of it, it will probably stop moving. He had stopped moving, by the by. Okay, um, I'm going to stack up some good old hay. I don't know, are there hay in, hay in graveyards? Not often, I guess. 
Not really. Okay, uh, looking good. What else we got over here? I have some pillars, which I don't think are gonna suit this level. I think I'm gonna keep those for my house level, or sorry, my guild house level. Uh, I believe there's four of them in this stack. I will move something else instead. I have the other skull. And keep him in this tree down here and do the same thing, light his head on fire. Ah, there he is. Okay, on to the next one. Uh, I have something that's deselecting. I don't know what's what's going on. That something, some object in there does not want me to select it. That's a little odd. Oh, I love this sign. This is a pumpkin sign. I keep him right by the opening, like right by the entrance there. Okay, what's this one? Oh, it is the pumpkin sign. You can stay over there. Okay, next is. What do we got? Oh, a fairy. Yeah. Um, these little fairies were uh, 5,000 grillats each. Uh, they were on sale uh, in the Club Crypt, actually, uh, quite a few years ago. I think it was 2015, 2016, something like that. Um, they were, yeah, 5,000 bucks each. Pretty expensive, but they're awesome. They have the little sparkly effect. I'm pretty happy with the purchase. I bought four of them at the time. I actually just had a, an upload refunded. Let's see what's next here. I had the snack, by the way, there too. <laughs> There's a little snake pet. Uh, okay, I got a bat sign. The bat sign I'm going to keep um, at a couple awkward places so the players can see it. I'll get them to uh, to read the sign at some point if they walk into it. Let's get these gothic fence. Oh, it's the last gothic fence piece. Wow, I just needed one more. Interesting. Yeah, so that's done. Uh, I've got my gothic fences all set up. I got a water trough. Um, I think what I'm getting at here is actually I'm going to have a little section where I have some creepy mounts. I know I have a few creepy mounts. Uh, there was a silly dog that was the uh, the VIP this month. I'm not super thrilled with that, but or no, in October he wasn't this month. It's November now. What am I saying? What am I saying? Okay, uh, so there was a little spooky dog. He's got a little sheet on. He's like a little ghost dog, but uh, there were some pretty spooky mounts from before. I have a, an eyeball. Um, there was a, a scarecrow horse that I liked quite a bit. This is a, a giant mushroom, giant multicolor mushroom from the Alice in Wonderland. That's totally going in my, my Halloween theme place here. Uh, what's a jarring bright color? That pink and blue is almost the one. Yeah, we're going for it. Grab something else from the pile. Oh, we got a little red and white mushroom. Those are the uh, the classic ones. I'll keep them up top so they're prominent when you're coming out the door. I'm also going to use this to kind of cover up the other mushroom. There was a little pink mushroom hiding in there. A little plain one. Uh, this is curious window. Oh no, it's the other bat sign. Cool. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep that on the other side by the door. Maybe I'll make, put jokes on the bat signs. I think that's probably the best way to go. Why did the skeleton decide not to cross the road? Because he didn't have the guts. There you go. Terrible jokes. Uh, a honeycomb mailbox. Yeah, that can go by the entrance too. Nobody will notice. Well, I mean, you'll notice, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Players who enter the level may or may not notice this honeycomb mailbox. Okay, we're going to keep that other mushroom up by the tree. Uh, and it should be the same color. Uh, and now I've come to the hitching post, which is where I will keep my scary mounts eventually. I'll probably do that out of out of a build session here. Great, I'm starting to get a little cluttered. Uh, my my objects are starting to kind of sort themselves as I as I putter through here. I'm pretty happy with that the way that it's coming together. Um, I can see some interesting patterns going on. Um, I see that there's there's definitive locations within the level, which is always something that I'm looking for. I want to be able to identify the the spots for specific items before they even pop into my my line of view there. 
Uh, I'm going to take this guy. And the interesting thing is these um, these kind of tentacle um, fences, they work so well with other fences. There was another one recently, um, well, not recently, I think it was like a year ago or something now, which was a vine fence. And the vine fence, you can use it on its own to an extent, but it's designed to be used uh, with another fence, so like in conjunction with a fence. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the, uh, the tentacle fence um, behind these uh, gothic fences to make it look like there's tentacles coming up the back side of these fences. And what that's going to do, um, you know, visually is, I mean, other than adding tentacles to the, the fences, which is rad, um, they're going to, at layer zero, um, create a, a, an impact of death. Or depth, sorry, death. <laughs> it's too much Halloween junk, man. <laughs> uh, impact of death. No, it's uh, the impact of depth. So the idea is that I want to be able to visually see the location, um, but I also want to be able to get a sense of where the objects stand in relation to each other. And while that's going on, um, you know, uh, on the X, Y coordinates, we don't really have a Z coordinate going on. Right. We don't have the option to play with stuff at a level where um, height is involved. Right, We don't have the, you know, uh, there's not three dimensions. It's a two-dimensional space that we're working in. So anywhere we can create that impression of th third dimension um, really adds to the effect and adds to the atmosphere in the level. Okay, so we're moving back up to this other pile here. Uh, I got a couple of cool items. There's the last brownie chair. Right there, looking good. Um, I'm gonna actually take this other spooky tentacle thing and put it up at the back up here. Keep the effect up there and not down at the bottom here. Cause what's gonna happen is if I put um, these tentacles along the, the brownie chair, I may not be able to um, move in that area. Like I might not be able to, to navigate between the chair, um, sorry, between the, the table edge and the, the bottom of those fences. Okay. Uh, vines. Oh, I just realized now that there's one place that I always put these vines, and it's on top of the um, the gate in every level. And there's no place in this level to keep these vines. Uh, maybe I'll keep them here. I'll keep them there too. Good enough. Get rid of the other pillar. Get rid of the other pillar, I said. Oh, it's not letting me delete the pillar. Oh, well, hell's breaking loose here. Okay, move it up there. Wow. Gotta love the controls. Yep, no, it deleted it, and now it's still reading it as there. That's fun. Okay, so this is my other vines. I will keep the other vines close by so that they're visually referenced. Uh, what do we got next? I don't know what that's gonna be. Probably another Crypt Candle. Oh, so this is a little monster hand chair. Uh, I will keep that out a little bit out of the way down here. And keep them right about there. Kind of reminds me of like a cross between the monkey's paw story and uh, some little scary goblin monster. The goblin's paw. Cool, okay. We got all kinds of short story ideas coming through here today. <laughs> okay, I got a, a Halo YouTube sign up here. That's fitting. Uh, what else we got? <laughs> I could keep the uh, the curious window basically in the uh, the tree. That's not creepy at all. People living in trees and staring out the little window. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna have a wall anywhere else. Might as well be the spot. Okay, and I have another one of these. Uh, gothic fences up here. And we'll keep that in behind there. Go with the running 
theme of the gothic fences having the tentacle monsters coming up the sides underneath the ground. The Eldritch Abominations. There we go. Rotate that guy a couple times so he's the smaller variant. Just like that, perfect. Okay. Uh, the trees have eyes. Oh, no, that one's down a little bit lower. Got it right there. Cool, okay. It's like uh, some kind of little evil gnome house. All right, now we're getting down to the, the bottom of the, the barrel over here. Uh, I've got a stone. Oh, but wait, I was going to, yeah, okay. No, that one's going to go somewhere else. I'll keep this up here. We'll put that on another tree. But I'm going to put the, um, I've forgotten that I'm going to put this uh, this fountain on top of that tree to block it up. I love I love the appearance of the fountain with no uh, water. It's just such a dead thing, like in, in relation to the rest of what's going on in this level. It's just so perfect to have, like, the lifeless fountain. Okay, probably got another stone there. Let me check it up here. What's next? What's next? We got another stone. I got rocks. Throwing rocks over here. And judicious use of the... Um, the half increments is good with these guys, um, especially pets or objects that don't have collisions or that you're not looking for using the collisions with. Uh, you can easily use the half increment movement and make something kind of cool. I have the no running sign. I love this for scary house. <laughs> I think it's just the perfect thing. Originally, it was from a pool. It was from the swimming pool. But I love the, the joke that, you know, having a sign that says no running. It's like, okay. <laughs> horror movie stuff. Uh, should I keep it in the tree or on the fence over here? I think maybe on the fence. Uh, but it's going to have to be layer two if I keep it on the fence. Uh, I could keep it on the on the base of these guys. Nah, it doesn't look as good there. I'm going to keep it on the fence and keep it at layer two. Keep it on the middle fence here. You're not going to be able to access this spot, too. I think this is actually the perfect spot because you're not going to be able to get here because that, that big fountain is going to be sitting up on top. So, perfect. That's just the spot for it. Okay, so I got some more um, chairs here. And the log benches. I'm going to keep those with my fire over here. Uh, try and arrange them in some kind of relatively decent fashion. Uh, I only want two. I don't want the full four. Uh, actually, the stone. I'm going to move the stone out of the way and jam the log fence. The log uh, bench, rather. Right in that section there. I can see where it goes already. Right about there. Uh, but that's overlapping. There's like a two pixel overlap on that that uh, stump there. Too bad. So I'll have to move it up. <laughs> this guy will also come up. And the stone could have probably stayed where it was. Great. Right there is fine. Okay. Um, I see another potential issue here, which is these little tiny mushrooms. Uh, if that little mushroom blocks movement, it might be annoying. Oh, no, it doesn't. In the old layouts, they sure did. Okay, this guy here. Uh, I have another log bench. I'm going to get rid of that one. I will save it for another level. Another log bench. Oh, look at that. And it's done. That pile is annihilated. Okay, so I've got this stone here. I will keep one stone in this section. Um, and I just realized just now that I cannot any longer get into that lower area there. So what I see is that um, there's these bush objects, these bush skulls. 
And I don't think I can navigate through that little tiny crack there to get in. Oh, yeah. Can I get out that way? Oh, I can. <laughs> it does not look right, though. It's, it's yeah. Uh, I will move it up to two half increments to there. Uh, and I know what's going to happen is on the other side here, I'm going to have a problem. Uh, because I'm going to be sitting on a half a mushroom. Yeah, half the mushroom shows up down here. But it had to be done. Um, maybe that stone is a good solution? No, not really. It's not really going to fit there, but I'll give it a shot just for looks. Let's see. Oh, judicious use of half increments, does it? Great, yeah, looks perfect. Cool, okay. Good job, Rocky. And now I can finally place this big dead fountain right smack over top of that tree. Uh, I don't think I can half increment that puppy. It's going right there. Perfect. Uh, this little yellow tree is not looking good where it is. I'm going to swap it up for this bone here. Keep that down here. Maybe put a little candle beside it or behind it. Mm, right there. Move this guy down a half increment. I'm just creating setting stuff now. It's like cutesy. There we go. Get some nice depth with the uh, the top of the horn overlapping on the, the candle. Okay, I'm going to enable the, the lighting, and that's going to be probably one of, um, I think it's maybe my second or third lighting effect in this room, or in this level, rather. Cool, okay, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, going to have these tombstones kicking around. I uh, probably want to put one up in this corner here, and I think what's going on here is I'm getting to the end of this run. Uh, basically, my pile of stuff has run pretty slim. Uh, I've got my, my bottom, most of my house here pretty well laid out. And it's moving in a direction where there's defined pathways that are coming into the, the space. Um, there's interactive portions. There's a section where you can see one thing or sit over here or sit down here. Um, there's this big old fountain sitting here uh, covering up this tree surreptitiously. Uh, but yeah, it's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm liking where this is going. Um, I hope that it's helpful to you guys, that you're enjoying, that my terrible jokes are not, you know, too terribly bad. If you have any lame Halloween jokes, please add them in the comments. I love, I love old stupid jokes. And I will clean this up and probably come in with another layer of detail next time. Thanks everybody so much for watching. See you then.